<laughs> You're getting those, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we have had some that fall off, like sometimes the birds are watching. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. But it's it's dinghy on the good. top that's got a little antenna on it. <laughs> <laughs> The bags are made out of cotton, uh, and so that way the birds can breathe inside them. So these guys are pretty big, so these are maybe 20, 22 days old, something like that. So they'll be in there for another week, I would say, so they're not fully grown. You see how their wings are still, the feathers are still in the shaft? And, so they, and you can see uh, this very typical swallow bird type of, of, of appearance, or long wings, because they spend nearly all their life flying around, so long wings, uh, and just very short legs. Yeah, so we're going to band all of them. And so these are the metal bands that we put on their legs, and they're just made of aluminum, because we don't want them flying around with anything heavy uh, on their legs. Yeah, what? so it's a little radio transmitter, it has a little solar panel that powers it, and then each of these loops will go around the legs. And I'm just going to put it around the leg, like this, and these are special banding pliers. So they've got little teeth here, okay, and that's important because no matter how hard you squeeze, you can't hurt the bird, because the teeth will touch first. Stand on like that, and you basically just put a numbered bracelet on the bird. And as long as you get the right size band, It'll just rotate, it rotates and, rota and as long as it rotates, it's fine. And obviously, you don't want to put a, a band on that's too small because it would pinch their legs and it would swell up. And you don't want to put one on that's too big because it would slide over their toes or fall off. Well, this one's perfect. So this will be on that bird for the rest of its life. From now, and also, you can't tell males from females when they're nestlings. They all look the same. But you can see this one's pretty old, so it's starting to get some purple, starting to get some purple head. See? So while the birds are here for the breeding season, we should be able to know where they, about whereabouts they are. And so they go back to their nest, uh, and the parents will come back and feed them. So you know, sometimes people say, "Oh, if you handle baby birds, yeah, well, the right. parents," and it's completely not true. Birds have got almost no sense of smell, so it, so it won't make any difference. I banned thousands of these and never had any problems. Uh, my theory is that it's something that parents tell their kids. So the kids don't come home with bird people. <laughs> that's all they are. That's all they are. And the amazing thing about pebble martins is even though, they, even though the thing is lured, they have such a strong instinct to feed their young that they'll still keep feeding. Are there still babies in there? A couple of the other nests had babies in, yeah. 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 So, so the, the parents know where to stuff the food, so it's very bright because they know they're in a dark cavity, so the, the parents need to be able to see where to put the food. I got it your way. Yeah. That's okay. That's okay. So I need to check again to make sure that the straps are up high. 
It's we don't actually, it. it's on its leg as well. Yes, so it's around each leg. Okay. And then just goes over the back. And see how I said it was going to sit right on the rump of the fur? So this will sit. So I'm just going to finish tying the knot, and then I'll put a little dab of super glue. Did you already band all six? No, no, I was, oh, just, okay. I, I was, trying, to take a, I was just trying to take it one bird at a time. Okay. So we're tying the knot, and then we'll just glue it so the glue will soak into the, the fiber, like the fabric of the elastic, and make this a really sturdy mm -hmm. knot so they won't ever slip out of it. Good okay. idea. And then after I'm done gluing it, I'll trim down the tail so mm -hmm. it doesn't weigh as much. So each of these tags weighs about a gram, which is the same amount as a paper clip. And how much do the nestlings weigh? When they fledge, they'll be about 50 grams. Mm. Yeah, because there's limits for the bounding lab for ethics about how heavy something you can put on a bird. It's yeah. got to be less than 3% of the bird's weight. So that's 2%. Because okay. you don't want, again, you don't want the bird flying around with something heavy on its, on its back in case yeah. it's, you know, it limits its ability to fly. Dragon, yeah. You've got to go all the way to South America these things. So. Mm -hmm. right. you want to have we don't want to put this back in the bag because we don't want to risk the tag breaking. Mm -hmm. Ah. So we just got to make sure we don't kick the bucket around, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. Nobody kicks the bucket. That's important. The bird is in our... So that's actually a good age for banding because you don't want to band them when they're too small because then they couldn't handle, you know, we'd over the, for the tag. But you don't, you don't want to do it when they're too big because if they're too big, they start jumping around and you don't want them to leave the nest early. So, you know, the ideal age is just when you've tagged them. Okay. Well, why don't you look at them one by one? Yeah. <laughs> this one, uh, this one sort of, uh, so we'll just put this one back in the bag. So again, this one, I'm just clamping the leg. Good. There you go. So, so this one's been done, if anybody wants to go to another one. So that one's been done, and then I'll just do this. There's a lot. So most Pebble Martins, it's sort of between three and five. You occasionally get a six, but it's not common. This this one's pretty chunky. I love the way he puts it right between. Yeah, that's the way you do it. It's a little more tricky with a hummingbird. Oh this one I'll say, oh, yeah. So yeah, what we're going to do is band them all, and then Katie's going to look at them and see which one she thinks. When you're trying to they've already got a band on their leg. Uh, and I found several adults from other colonies around here. You know, uh, so there's a couple of colonies at Glen Mills, Pennsylvania, where they do a lot of banding, so I've caught some of their birds that I heard it was, whether it was a male or a female, whether it was a young bird or an old bird. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and so what that means is if somebody catches one of my birds, like another bander, or they find it dead, you know, because sometimes they're just flying the windows or whatever, then I get an email saying, uh, oh, somebody got one of your birds in such and such a place. And then the person who found it gets an email telling them where I was from. Mm. But you don't actually have to see, uh, catch the bird uh, to read the band. It definitely makes it easier to find those apple and nature centers yeah, sure. the bird planes. Yeah. And people like to go there watching the birds and photographing the birds. And somebody photographed a downy woodpecker and they were able to read the band. Wow. Wow. Pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the bird blind is fantastic for that sort of thing because you can just sit there quietly. Uh, and eventually get some good pictures. So yeah, this one's smaller than the other. As you can tell, maybe this one was hatched the day after or something like that. But you see it doesn't have the purple head. It hasn't developed the purple head yet. It's still all brown. So I always tell people that, that birds develop things in the order of importance. So when they're young, all they need is a stomach and a mouth. <laughs> so young birds have a huge stomach and a big mouth because they don't need to move around or anything. It's only when they get older that their eyes start opening and their wings start flapping them out. And you can see also if you look sorry, if you look at this one it's got more of its feathers are still in the shaft. Oh, yeah, you remember yeah. the first one I showed uh -huh. you was about yeah. half of the feather was uh -huh. out of the shaft. This one is only maybe a third. So yeah, this one's definitely yeah, really well. It's not necessarily a good thing to come back to where you were born. Uh, oh, okay. Too many enemies already. Well, you don't, you, don't, you don't end up breeding with any of your relatives. Oh, that's the general oh, idea. Okay. But, I mean, they do sometimes come back, you know, the nestings do sometimes come back to the very same colony, but, it's, it's, but mostly it's somewhere in the general area.
local movements, but the, the original purpose was to track migratory movement. So they have modus towers all the way up in Canada and all the way down through the southern U.S. and starting in Central America and South America too. So there are more modus towers being put up every single day. 15 kilometers gets picked up. But because you put up all these towers that overlap, you can pinpoint the position of the of where birds are. Yeah, so here's an example from last year of one of our adult martins at uh, Bucktail Creek Preserve. So that's in Avenue? Yeah, Kennett Square. In Kennett Square. Square. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we, using all the math to triangulate uh, using the multiple tower detections, um, we pinpointed all these different points through time. and. We kind of expected the birds to be spending most of their time over the meadow, you know, looking for insects and catching like dragonflies over the meadow. But when we when we plotted out the points, it, they seemed to spend a lot more time. This bird, at least, um, spent a lot more time flying over the tree line. Hmm. Uh -huh. So like kind of over a riparian area. So maybe they were, maybe she was catching um, like the the stream macroinvertebrates like stoneflies or mayflies or something. Um, so that's just really interesting because we're trying to, to map out more of their habitat association so we can have more specific conservation measures for land managers because purple martins are a declining species. Uh, so we want to make sure that we can give um, conservationists and land managers uh, the most accurate information we can to provide for purple martins. Why are they a declining species? When these babies uh, fly away, <laughs> will, will we have a new group coming in? Will, 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 no. will more birds come and make more babies? <laughs> so not this year, but next year, yes. And Especially then your question, yeah. there why are, are a lot, declining? why are they declining? Um, it, there's a whole lot of reasons that people think. Tree falls, and so the ideas with this project and others, if you can work out from the map. But once they're out of the nest, it's things like, like raptors. <laughs> make sure the antenna's all the way in before you close the door. Ah. You want to close it. You close the door, so there it is there. So, five is a two-room apartment? Well, that does the nest, and then there's a little bit that they go into when they're ready to leave. And the <laughs> 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 so when the parents go in, they go in this hole and then they walk in the Oh, interesting. So I'm just going to put that there and then we'll just bore here. So these are big enough to band. They're not big enough to tag because they're quite small, but they're big enough to band.